Good morning, my brothers and sisters. I'm glad that you've been able to join me again this morning. I want to thank God for the opportunity that God has afforded me just to be able to come before you at such a time as this in the year 2021, just to be a blessing into your lives. I want to thank God that yesterday we began just by an introduction of how we're going to be able to sow and mount up with wings as eagles. And we read our scripture, uh, which we found in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 40, uh, verse 28, all the way through to 31. And in this day too, uh, I want us just to be able to talk about building your wings. Because the moment you decide to take a flight, then you need to build your wings. Uh, I'd like us just to read the scripture again in the book of Isaiah chapter number 40 verse 28 all the way through to 31. Uh, today I'm reading from the, uh, from the English Standard Version. Uh, verse 28, the Bible says, Have you not known, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. There's a guy by the name uh, Plutus who said, Flight without feathers is not easy. Flight without feathers is not easy. And that's why we keep on going back to Isaiah chapter number 40. If you look at verse number 31 again, the Bible says, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Listen to me, my brothers and sisters. Taking action to be able to turn your dream into a flying machine requires a strategic flight plan and the resourcefulness to use the materials that are available to you or the materials that are at, at your disposal. As with building a plane, most entrepreneurs start with pieces. They start with parts. They start with potentials. All of us need to begin now to look in the inside of us. What do you have in the inside of you? What has God deposited in the inside of you? Because I believe that in every human being, God has put divine abilities in the inside of us. They are inborn. They are innate. And thus, one should never think of soaring while living in oblivion over the wealth that has been deposited in our lives. I told us yesterday that within you, you've got the ability to soar and mount up. All you need to do is to look into the inside of you and begin to find what do I have in me? What is in the inside of me? What have I been created for? What are my abilities? What are my talents? What are my giftings? What is my passion? What do I feel like I need to do? And the moment you realize that, you begin to harness it because your proficiency at fusing this particular fragments creates the uniqueness of your brand and hastens your goal of operating at higher altitudes uh, than your past experiences in your yesteryears. So all you need to do is to begin to find out these fragments, these pieces, these particles that God deposited in you and begin to put them together and allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to breathe in the inside of you and it will propel you to the next level. If you want to build your wings and begin to mount up, then you need to resist the temptation to give up. I'll say it again. If you want to build your wings, then you need to resist the temptation to give up. Resist the temptation to give up hope and the assumption that only people born 
with the gilded wings of education and financial stability can be able to fly. Those are not the only ones that get to fly. Even those that have been born in Korogocho slums, if they dare enough, they can be able to, to, to fly. Even those that have been born in Eastlands and born in Majengo or Kangware, whichever place you want to call it, everywhere you have been born, God knew that that was the conducive environment for you to be able to thrive in, realize your potential, and become the person that you are supposed to be in life. Anywhere you were born, that's not an excuse for you to live a mediocre life. The moment you look around your life and around yourself and what God has deposited in your life, if you begin to put those fragments together, then I guarantee you that within you, there is an opportunity for you to be able to begin to mount up. The reason as to why I'm saying this is because success crafted from our own hands is not only possible, but more satisfying for the amount of tears, the amount of sweat, the amount of pain and the blood that we pour into it the moment we, be, we desire to smile. And this is because everything that you think, everything that you do, everything that, you know, you feel begins to flow out of your identity, which is the compass that shifts and shapes your perspective about life. I've learned over the years that I've been born again. And this is not necessarily about longevity, but having gone through the journey of life, I've, I've begun to understand that on this earth, most people who are highly successful didn't develop in an environment of success. They evolved into that particular environment. And the first step that you and I need to take is not only looking up and dreaming about flying to the next level, but the very first step that you need to take is to see how far you've already come. You need to begin to see or realize or find out or be cognizant of the very fact that where you are right now is not where you used to be. You need to begin to look at the skills that you have acquired over your journey of life. And when you look at those skills, when you look at those abilities in your life, and you feel that what you collected in your journey of life can be beneficial in your present, then now you can begin to soar and overcome the temptations that comes with giving up. The moment you discover the wealth that is in the inside of you, then it propels you to desire to begin to mount up with wings as eagles. So for you to be able to build your wings, you not only, the, you not only resist the temptations to give up, but also you must admit your desire to fly. The question is, as much as we've got this thing, do you want to fly? How badly do you need it? How badly do you want to fly? He said to me, child of God, David said in the book of Psalms, chapter number 55, verse 5 to 7, in the NIV version, he said, fear and trembling overwhelm me, and I can't stop shaking. Oh, that I had wings like a dove, when I would fly away and rest, I would fly far away to the quiet of the wilderness. In this verses, David agonized over the betrayal and the treachery of his trusted counselor called Ahithophel and his own rebellious son, Absalom. He longed for an escape just to go away from it all. Just to go away because at times we become so weary. We're in so much pain. There's a lot of turmoil. We are in disdain. We are distraught. 
we, we don't know what to do. And we feel like, yeah, I think I need to get some wings. I need to build some wings to fly away from the problems. Listen to me, child of God. We are not flying away from problems. Those problems can be used as a stepping stone to your next level. We are flying and soaring and mounting up with wings like eagles to be better persons, not to run away from what we have gone through. And I know there are many of us, that's including you and, you and I, who've uttered the same prayer that David had just made a while ago. And it's stemming from our weariness, from our overwhelming circumstances, our extreme discouragements. Some of them are an explained fear that someone or something might have clipped our wings permanently and thus deters us to be able to build those wings again. Let me tell you, child of God, regardless of what you've gone through, you can build your wings again. Your feathers can begin to grow again and you will be able to mount up because all you are expected to do by the end of it all is not to get away from the problem, but look at the solution from Scripture. Because God, I guarantee you, will always use unpleasant or stressful situations to be able to push us to the edge of our current nest. Because at times some of us have become so comfortable where we are and God sees the potential that is in the inside of us and he pushes us. He uses some of the challenges that we go through and he pushes us out of that nest because he wants us to launch into the deep. He wants us to begin to grow our feathers and begin to try to fly again. Don't allow your pain to kill you. Don't allow your pain to define you. Don't allow your pain to impede your mobility. Nobody should ever look at you and determine where you came from because of what they see through your facial expression. There can be an opportunity for you to fly again. All you need to do is to admit your desire to fly. Because when trying to get a new venture off the ground, we must not only be att attuned to our own avenues and abilities, but also to ways and means that we can be able to make them our own unique creation on that sustainable, you know, uh, the, the, on, uh, the something that will enable us to be sustainable and begin to fly and begin to take a flight. And when we take a flight, we are not taking a flight for a short distance. We are taking a flight for a long distance because we have decided to attune ourselves to new avenues that we feel can enable us to fly. We begin to evolve into our instinct. We begin to feel in the inside of us that we can be able to fly. Listen to me, child of God. You not only admit that, but you must be willing to move beyond your comfort zone if you want to fly. If you want to build those wings, then you must be willing to move beyond your comfort zones. Listen to me, child of God. There are times we are not able to fly because of our cliches, because of our customs, because of our traditions and cultures. And we've got uh, this thing that we always say, this is how, this is how we've been doing it. You don't want to move from where you've been because this is how you're used to be doing it. But when you truly want to grow your wings, you must learn and desire to try a different approach in life. Stretch yourself. Trust God more. Worry less. Challenge yourself in small ways if necessary. And when you do so, begin to reward yourself for every accomplishment. Because no matter how insignificant it may seem to you, you can stay where you are and never take a risk. But you might miss the adventure of God if you decide never to move from your comfort zones. God never asks us or tasks us to, you know, impossible risks on our own. Anytime he pushes us out of the nest, his hands are right down there so that you don't fall down. 
Abraham left everything that was familiar to him in the book of Genesis chapter number 12 to travel to an unknown destination. But the adventure was God's idea, not Abraham's idea. It required that adventure that God pushed Abraham into required a constant trust in God's ability to lead Abraham to that particular destination that God had promised him. Abraham's obedience to begin to take a flight with wings of faith resulted ultimately into the blessings that all the believers keep on ruminating about. You keep on declaring, may the Lord bless you with the blessings of Abraham. But that would not have been so if Abraham would have refused to move from his comfort zone and take a flight and begin to sow and mount up. I want you to remember today that if you want to shift from expending energy trying to get off the ground to actually flying as a believer, then you must begin to identify your motivations in life. What's the impetus behind your desire to sow or mount up with wings as eagles? I know you want to build your wings, but what's the motivation? What's pushing you to be able to do that? Is it the theme or is it the desire? Is it the instinct? What is this that is pushing you that you want to begin to mount up? For many of us, it's more of economic advancement. For others, it's a desire to be at par with those that they grew up with. And so for some of us, that which is fueling our lives is that internal engine. It's, it's the ambition that we have to be able to move to the next level. And guess what? We as a church, whenever themes are given yearly, often we think of what's in it for me? How much money am I going to get when I begin to mount up? How many houses will I build or buy or be given when I mount up? But I must caution you that if making money only is the primary motivation for launching into a new venture or desiring to mount up with wings as eagles, then you're automatically limiting how high you can be able to fly. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with being motivated by the desire to make more money and elevate your family's lifestyle. I would actually want more money too. However, when money becomes your primary motivator, then you will typically stall out rather very, very quickly. If you're only concerned about your profit margins in your business or your salary at your workplace and not the big picture of your business as a whole, then you and I will miss an opportunity to build your wings you will cut corners for short-term gains and lose sight of the qualitative aspects of your endeavor. And that's why the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter number 6 and verse number 10 tells us, it, we are told, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. I want you to notice here that money is not the problem. Money is not the problem at all. It's our love for it above everything else. Financial motivation must be tempered with a clear vision of what you want to accomplish and the sheer passion for whatever field or industry or cause or product you hope to bring to the rest of the world and to the society. Build your wings, my brothers and my sisters, if you want to so high this year. You must learn to build your wings. I believe the Lord has blessed you. And I believe the Lord has spoken into your lives. You must build your wings. You must not only have the instinct and the desire to move forward, but you must learn to now grow your feathers. And you will grow it the moment you refuse to give up. You grow it the moment you admit that out of your core, out of your inner being, you desire to fly. See you at the top, my brothers and sisters. See you when we are up there mounting together. 
And I believe there's a lot to be accomplished in the inside of you. May the Lord really bless you. Allow me just to pray for you. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for my brothers and sisters that took the initiative to tune themselves to what we are discussing today. And I pray out of the depths of my heart that may you continue to bless them and keep them and enable them to begin to mount up with wings as its eagles. Lord, it's my prayer that nothing will be an encumbrance to their flight. I pray that, Father God, you'll enable them to be able to look at the very things that have deterred them in, uh, over the years and that they'll begin to put them aside and open up their hearts and begin, you know, to, in, to evolve into the new dimensions that God, you've apportioned us today. Lord, I pray that what we have learned will begin to appropriate them in our lives and become better persons. I bless them today as they do their work as they journey to their workplaces, as they get into their businesses, oh God, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. See you again tomorrow. Same time, same channel. Share with as many, as, your, as many friends as you can. And let's meet again tomorrow and continue on how we can be able to grow our vision. God bless you. Thank you.